Are you a sad individual living under a prison opera house and dropping chandeliers on people's heads for fun? Well, you may want to stop because that's a crime and get yourself a podcast. How do you do that? Easy. It's with Anchor. Anchor is a totally free app and website, and you can record from your phone or your computer. You don't need fancy smancy equipment. Seriously, I have recorded podcasts from my bathtub while I was bathing. Anchor is free and super easy to use. Anchor has really simple podcasting tools. You sign up and then you start podcasting. It really is that simple. Within an hour of starting my podcast, I was already distributed on Spotify. Now I'm on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Breaker, and Radio Public. So go look for the app or the website. The website is anchor.fm. And the app, just go to your friendly local app store and look up Anchor. That's A-N-C-H-O-R. Happy podcasting! I received this book from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review. All opinions on my own, and I have not been paid for them. Thanks for listening. Hello! Welcome to the Kwai Sari Bartfast podcast. The podcast where we discuss music, games, books, movies, and today we are in particular discussing Ruthless Gods by Emily A. Duncan, which is published by Wednesday Books, an imprint of St. Martin's Press. Some content warnings for you. This book contains people cutting themselves for magical purposes. It's dealt with very cavalierly. Um, drinking alcohol, drug use, and lots so much body horror. So if you are not in the space to be able to deal with subjects like that, that's fine. Just find another episode of the podcast, then come back to it if you're ever ready. I I hate giving bad reviews to books. It really makes me feel bad. So if I sound a little awkward, that's why. But anyway, to recap the first book in the series which is something so dark and holy and the book is called wicked saints we have war breaking out between basically fantasy russia and fantasy poland and nadia is a cleric sephron's the prince who's invading her country with his calliason i think his country is trinavia the calliason the think of the Trinavians as heretics because they use blood magic. Uh, Nadia is captured and a journey is going on with Seferin and his cousin and then on the way they meet two others who are Colins who are named Parajan and Rashid, who, by the way, as far as I can tell, are the only characters of color in the book. Oh, and Severin has a lieutenant named Ostia, who is missing an eye, which comes up when the second book has, whoo, there is a lot of eyeball horror in the second book. So anyway, things happen. They get to Trinavia, and long story short, the king is evil, trying to turn himself into God, tries to sacrifice Sephirin for this. Uh, Nadia kills him. It turns out that Mal is the black vulture, and basically he turns into a bird and flaps away. And Nadia is very upset about this betrayal. That's basically the gist of the first book. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't read Wicked Saints in months, and the reason was because, honestly, I didn't really care for it, but I wanted to give uh, Ruthless Gods a chance to stand on its own without, like, being tainted by my prior opinion of the first book, and unfortunately, they're kind of more of the same. So, the premise of this book is Seferin and Nadia are both being haunted by gods who are basically leading to do this um, to find 
the old gods or to destroy the old gods. So there's basically a road trip and a buddy and more of the same crap that went along in the same book. Which is... So first of all, um, this book has some really awkward banter that's supposed to masquerade a sexual tension. And it's just... It's irritating. It really is. I did not like reading it. It's like... Malishaz and Nadia just need to shut up and just... It, it didn't work for me. I don't know, maybe... There are ways to write that kind of relationship, but this was not done well, in my opinion. Um, Let's see. Another thing that really bothered me was... um, Let's see. I don't know how to say this. The book... It came off as really racist. Like... Because the people who are described as having, like, dark hair and dark eyes were, uh, the ones who are scrabbling around in caves. And, uh, Parge, who is royalty, like, should have, like, this really fascinating backstory, but it's all passed over for, uh, to worry about Sephron. And it's just... I don't know. It It's weird. I, I didn't like that part of it. And then we get to the constant bloodletting. Um, as somebody who has done self-injury, um, it didn't really upset me so much as annoyed me at how casually it was treated. I mean, I get it. This is a, a fantasy novel, so, you know, maybe it wouldn't have the same effect as if, like, you or I are doing it. And I get that, but I still found it kind of troubled. On the other hand, I am in no shape or form the kind of person who's like, oh no, a child play Grand Theft Auto, they're gonna go hijack cars. Like, I don't think anybody's going to, like read these books and be like, oh, that seems super glamorous because, well, it's kind of dealt with casually. It doesn't seem like a really entertaining thing to do, but it's just strange. Like, there's a scene, like, I actually put this on my Facebook because it, it struck me as so odd. And, uh, Mal cuts Nadia's arm for something. I don't even remember what it's for. And then he dips his finger in the blood and he's like tasting it. And then they have this weird wacky banter which is supposed to be sexual attention but not. And uh, I guess the same thing would be applying to the way that uh, drinking is treated. Like I know that stand that Stefan is like under stress. I mean the dude has like a lot to deal with. I, I get that. But, I don't know, it's not really presented as, like, a destructive thing. Which, I mean, drinking to cure your pain kind of is. And also, it's weird because Sephiroth's supposed to have this deal where, like, he's constantly surrounded by moths. And his eye is wonky now. (laughs) And, um... So, like, it, it'll it just, like, randomly start bleeding for no particular reason because the gods are talking to him. And then Mal has eyeballs randomly appearing on him. And I, I think it's supposed to be a parallel, but it's really weird. And it seems like it was written just for the sake of being edgy. And I don't know. Look, I'm just telling you, I did not like this book there was so much of it that was just unpleasant and not in like oh I hate to read this about the character I care about it's like these people are annoying like there's a difference between reading a song of ice and fire and like oh that's so sad that happened then oh okay just move on to the next thing you know what I mean and uh so, Sephiroth's basically going around and, like, his eye is bleeding and for some reason, like, he doesn't think 
to take out the eye and that bothered me so much. Just duh. Anyway, um I'm kinda getting a headache. But it's so upsetting because this book should have been so good and like I s- seriously hate giving bad reviews, but that's my honest opinion of this book. Um definitely not gonna bother reading the third one. Uh sorry, not my thing. Um if you enjoyed this book, I'm happy for you. I do not think less of you. Different strokes for different folks. These are my opinions. So uh have a hoopy day and keep it free. Bye.